What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Harsh Language Podcast. We are oh on episode 78, just Dan and Dusty today, no Marvin. Um, yeah. How's it going, Dusty? It's going. Yeah. It's been a, yeah. Yep, yep. Episode Good 78. Week. Didn't do a whole lot. We're getting there. Yeah. Episode, the big 100. I don't know. Maybe we do something special for that, like uh, maybe a live or something, I don't know, that we've been talking about. Potentially going live. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we do, uh, maybe we flip the script and do a make Dan and Dusty watch, and Marvin gets to so pick something for 22 us. 22 weeks away, maybe, maybe, uh, no, the new Batman probably won't be out. Oh, that'd be actually, that's... that'd be funny if on episode 100 <laughs> we get to do the new Batman, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, as always, folks, if you want to keep in touch with us, check out all our links over on our website, harshlanguage.tv, and you could hit us up on Twitter. Or Blue Sky now. We're on Blue Sky, fancy, yeah, fancy place. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, everything can be found over on our website. But um, so on Letterboxd. Hmm? Letterboxd. Oh yeah, we made the Letterbox thing. That's a cool site. Have you messed with it? Uh, not since I made my Western list. No, I need to yeah go in there and do some more stuff. But yeah, we got a couple of followers on there now. If you're on Letterboxd, go check us out. We are posting. Uh, just little write-ups of each movie that we talk about each week, and we have a couple of lists that we've compiled. I gave, I made a list of my top ten horror films. Dusty made a list of his top ten westerns. We have a Make Marvin Watch mm -hmm. list, which is like stuff that we want eventually to make Marvin Watch. So if you want to contribute to the Make Marvin Watch list, hit us up on Twitter or whatever the fuck, and let yeah. us know. Give us some suggestions, and we'll throw it on the list if he hasn't watched it. But... Um, yeah, how was how's yeah, your weekend going? How how was your weekend? It's not the weekend anymore. How how was, uh, was your good. weekend? Is what I'm trying to say. It was good, uneventful. Mm -hmm. No real big sporting events. Rangers won tonight. That oh yeah, nice. hockey came back after a nine day break, the All Star break. Yeah, the worst time of year. Yeah. Oh, did you see um, Michael Bublé? No, his interview after the All Star game. No, I didn't uh, watch the All Star was... game. I kind of never do. He's like, yeah, my friend told me that this was a microdose of mushrooms. He was fucking lying. Wait, <laughs> he what? He started, went on this spiel about, like, oh, yeah, I was, I was awesome. I thought I was uh, in, in the movie, um, uh, what, it, Rings or Blades of Glory. Oh. And I realized it was at the All-Star game. It was just pretty funny. Like, when he came out later, he's like, I was just kidding. I was not on mushrooms, which he obviously was. But Right. His PR people were like, well, you got to crack that. <laughs> yeah, you got to walk that one back, buddy. I actually don't watch the All-Star game. I, I can't even remember the last time I watched the All-Star game. Uh, I'm sure it's like this. I didn't another... either, but I saw some highlights. I saw that, that Justin one. Bieber was there, and I was like, he's skating yeah. in warm-ups. That's weird. And a friend of mine was just like, oh, no, he's like a huge hockey fan, like huge Toronto fan and like this, that, and the other thing. He helped like design something on their jerseys, I think. I don't know. But... uh. Yeah, I don't really watch if I don't I'm sure it's the same in other sports, but like specifically in hockey, like it just ruins the fucking any type of momentum a team has, like sort of going into the all star break, you know? Yeah. Um but I mean it could also work the opposite way, right? Like if a team is sort of down in the dumps the way the Rangers have been, inconsistent, it could be it could provide a little bit of like a wake up call as well so um, yeah the nfl all-star game is they just had it's right before the super bowl so it's at the end of the season but right i mean they went from playing each other 10 20 years ago to now they do like flag football and who can get closest to the pin oh. swinging a golf club like they do all kinds of weird silly games now yeah i've always liked because nobody wants to get hurt right because that means contract well, that's yeah that's the other thing too and i don't know again if you're a <laughs> hockey fan you know that they just announced that they're going to be participating in the Olympics this year or this next Olympics. Mm -hmm. The NHL kind of like disallowed players from playing in the Olympics for a couple of years now, because I say a couple of years, obviously the Olympics is every four years or whatever. Um, because of the potential of like injury occurs, like when you're out there, but the players had a problem with it because they're like, well, we want to fucking represent our countries. And like, you know, 
do that stuff. So it's, didn't they announce flag football at the Olympics too? I thought they might have. Their oh, name. I don't know. But um, have you been watching anything yeah. recently? Twenty twenty eight summer games will have flag football, so that'll be interesting. Yeah. That's... Um, have I been watching anything? Yeah, I watched. Uh, <laughs> not really. I watched. Uh, <laughs> I figured you would have watched it, so I don't know if you did. I was waiting to ask you till we recorded, but I watched last week. I think it was like after. Might have been after we recorded last, but I watched um, <laughs> uh, the Beekeeper, the new oh, Jason yeah, I did Statham watch movie. That. Yeah, I did watch that. Yes. What did you think of it? That shit was hilarious. I mean, I knew going in like this is going to be this. It, it's like this is basically John Wick, except you know, he, yeah, he killed the lady who let me, who was nice to me, instead of you killed my dog. Right. It's a. It's a. Jason Statham movie, but I yeah. didn't think it was very good. I mean, it was like, you know, mildly. It was a fun, brainless action flick. I mean, yeah, yeah. it was mildly entertaining. Um, yeah. uh, not even close to John Wick, like in terms of quality, because John Wick is actually like a good, I think, movie. This is kind of not that. But the thing that I found the funniest about it is, is David Ayer directed it, and he's kind of been like pretty vocal as of late on social media about like, his quote unquote treatment from WB with the Suicide Squad film that he did. Um, oh, right. According, because so part of like the Zack Snyder released the Snyder Cut hashtag, there was a campaign to release the Ayer Cut because apparently he had said at some point that like the movie that we saw was not his. And in fact, apparently his, the treatment that he got from WB was like way worse. Like they, they destroyed his movie. And and I think that's been corroborated. Like, apparently, like, his movie was finished by, like, fucking editors, not even, like, directors. Like, it was a very bizarre thing. And I don't know why WB does stuff like that. But that movie was fucking terrible. And he's claiming, like, yeah, this isn't my movie. Which... Well, hopefully they don't do that under new leadership, but we'll see. I would hope not. Um, which I found funny. And then I was thinking back, like, you know, this guy made, like... He's done some pretty fucking banger ass fucking movies you know what i'm saying like he he wrote um did he write uh he wrote training day right and you know that's like a great movie a, it's a it's a big one in the history of film uh he wrote and directed end of watch which is i think one of the greatest like police related films ever it's such a fucking good movie it's like found foot it was just like body cam footage or whatever the fuck you want to call it that oh, movie's yeah. great yeah that one's yeah um, um it was the gyllenhaal yeah, yeah jake gyllenhaal and michael pena so yeah, and he did training day u5 yeah he's got some and he did the original fast and furious yep um so yeah he did he's got, he, he's got a movie one. called street kings that he directed which is also oh, very yeah, that good. One's great yeah um that movie fury with fucking brad pitt that was about the tank uh unit or whatever the tax collector did we review that one were we the no, we weren't. That was 2020. The so. task collector? Tax the collector. tax collector. No, no, we didn't. Yeah, that was... Um, uh, that was what's-his-name. Um, well, that's my case in Shia, point. Shia LaBeouf. That has a... Yeah, that has a 4.8. And now, yeah. like, Beekeeper... It's like his worst one. But, yeah. Well, Beekeeper's not... Well, so Beekeeper is a 6.5. But anyhow, my point being is that, like, this guy has some bangers, has some yeah, fucking does. stinkers, but I just thought it was funny that, like around the same time of him like being like, no, 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 my Suicide Squad is not this bad, I promise you. And he puts out Beekeeper, right. which Beekeeper is like a very forgettable, just like you said, mindless action movie. It's not even- Well, he, yeah, he regrets the whole Joker tattoo Oh, well, that's, thing. yeah. And, and it's, <laughs> the thing about Beekeeper, it's not even, I don't even think it's good on like Jason Statham standards. Like Jason Statham movies, like you expect- well, that you're you, not going to get the Meg great. too, right? I haven't watched the Meg too yet. Was, okay, this was less cheese, uh, more like I did like the Meg uh, one though. Yeah, Meg two is more cheese. It's just cheese. It's just Jason Statham action cheese. His best movie is that one with um, oh what the fuck, who's fucking Seth Rogen's like best friend? Who, uh, can't think of his fucking name. Um, anyhow, uh. No, well, yeah, I don't. Uh, his, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know their names. I'm thinking of his brother was in Neighbors. The little skinny guy is who I'm thinking of, but I don't think they're best friends. 
Well, they're no, uh, they're no longer best friends. Um, hang on. Uh, 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 um, Franco. Oh, not, I was not James right. Franco. James, the yeah, one with Franco. James Franco and Jason Statham is good. I can't remember the name of it. Um, let me see if I can find it. I've watched that a bunch of times, and I actually like it. James Franco plays like this fucking like weird like hillbilly fucking like drug runner guy. And of course, you oh know, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Jason Statham. Yeah, he's got the daughter. He's got the daughter, and the he, they move to yeah, try yeah, and get yeah, away yeah. from stuff. And of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's he's, a good one. What's that one called? Fuck. Um. Uh yeah, that one escapes me, but it's a good one. I'm trying to. I mean, look you can't really up. go wrong with a Stath Statham movie. Well, you can. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say. I think <laughs> I don't know that. This one was that great in terms of like his films. Homefront. Ah, Homefront, yeah. 2013. Homefront's good. I actually like Homefront. 6.5. Dude, Jason Statham's fucking old now. Yeah. But he's been like a staple in like, you know, film for a while. You kind of forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, he was back there when Jet Li was at his peak in the 90s and 2000s. Well, his first movie that I remember really him blowing up in was Transporter, right? Like that... That was like Jason Statham's. Uh, yeah, that was probably pretty me, much first movie. Yes. And that was before I graduated high school. That came out in two thousand two. So he's been like in, like he was in Snatch and Two Smoking Barrels before that and stuff. But like the Transporter was like the first time his it was him, right? So yeah, he, oh yeah. I mean, he had it, he was the uh, he was the main character in the, the one, one that right. was the Jet Li movie, yeah, mm -hmm. and then Ghost of Mars, obviously. But yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Snatch, I mean, <laughs> she was in Snatch and Lockstock. I know, so that great was movies, actually, but I'm saying, Transporter, yeah. first movie that was like, he was the star, that's when he really, yes. like, became a name, and he's just been around ever since, I just forget, like, how long ago that is now, at this point, it's 20 fucking years, a little bit more. Yeah, 20, over And he's 20 been years. in, like, a bunch of fucking shit, but, uh, yeah, Beekeeper, his latest, um, it was fun, it was fun, it wasn't terrible. Um, yeah. So what else I watched, finally, I watched Echo. And Oh yeah, what'd you think? I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. I again you can kind of tell what I meant though by saying like the ending felt a little rushed. Well, like, it actually was rushed. Last... Yeah. I was reading, I found out that in the writer's room, apparently this was supposed to have six episodes, and in the writer's room, Disney was like, right. sorry, we have to cut the budget. So get it down to five or whatever. And you could tell after episode three, like four and five is like very rushed. And like, you could tell they kind of just like scraped bits and pieces together to try to like finish the story they wanted to tell, especially the very mm -hmm. end. But I mean, other than that stuff, I thought it, I thought it was really good. Um, I really liked how they leaned into the Choctaw nation. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but yes, you are. Um, and I, you know, they worked alongside with them. You know, you showed us that mm -hmm. thing, not to dox you or anything, but yep. like they worked really closely with them on this story. And I don't know the specifics of it, but I think there was a bit of a controversy when she was released in the comic books about that, that like white writers wrote her as a character and like, didn't really. Oh, right. Didn't do their due diligence yeah. as far as researching. Um, yeah, I think in the comment in the comics, she's not chalked out. She's Cherokee mm -hmm. or uh, something yeah. else. Yeah, uh, yeah, I yeah. forget, but um, they, they went with Choctaw uh, for this, which is a good choice. I mean, but they didn't film in Oklahoma. They filmed in, um, so what they did is like they, they went to Choctaw and they talked to the tribes, and they actually went to the uh, the drum fest, which is at the end of the show. Right. And so they got to see all this stuff. And then they went to Georgia, I believe, is where they filmed it all. And they just tried to recreate most of what, I mean, the the terrain and everything is not all that different in small town Oklahoma. You can pretty much find that small town anywhere in the south. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but it was interesting, you know? Yeah, so Joe, she was created um, in the comic books. She was first... She first appeared it was in the nineties, right? Uh, no, I think she first appeared in. It was in a Daredevil. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, Daredevil number nine, yeah. nineteen ninety nine. She was actually created, um, by David Mack and Joe Casada. Joe Casada, obviously, um, you know, one of the bigger modern comic book guys. But I, yep. I do believe, um, 
there was some controversy at the time when her character came out because, um, you know, again, just they didn't... They were probably taking some liberties with what yeah. they were writing because they didn't know and they didn't do their research. And I could understand, yeah, that, that'd be uh, objectionable to... Right, of course. You know, whatever tribe you're trying to make them. So that point being, I got the sense that the show was really trying to sort of correct that. And I, they, you yeah. know, again, they worked alongside with, you know, alongside these people. Um, so I actually thought that was really well done. And I really love the fact that, like, you know, they did the origin of the Choctaw people. But, like, they didn't really, like, explain it the way Marvel does usually. Like, you know, we, uh, like, Marvel has explained a lot of stuff. Like, Thor is an alien, technically. He's not a god. It's just right. it's how early humans, like, made contact with them and were like, oh, yeah, they're gods. So they're not gods, they're aliens. This didn't even give an explanation. It's not like they're aliens or like Earth fucking people. They're just like, they just kind of show you. Well, that's the actual Choctaw origin. The legend, story. right. Well, no, yeah. I know, but I'm saying this, I like the way the show handled it. It was like yeah, absolutely. ambiguous really about it. Job. It was just like, here's the story. And they give you little flashes and glimpses of it. And that's kind of it. So I thought they did a really good job with that. But ultimately, I mean, it made me actually like give a shit about Echo as a character because... You know, in uh, when Hawkeye, when she first appeared in the Hawkeye show, which nobody watched, Hawkeye had like very low ratings, unfortunately, and that I think is one of the strongest Marvel shows to date. But like when she came, I was like, ah, fuck! Like they're you know they're fucking introducing this chick. I'm like, eh, I don't know if I feel it. She's kind of boring. Like, what's the purpose of her? But now, like, I actually give a shit about her. I even cried during that last episode, yeah. as like rushed as it feels. That scene where she meets, speaks to her mother, and her mother tells her that their ancestors are mm -hmm. echoing through her. That yeah. was like a pretty powerful moment. I thought. Um, yeah, I just thought her story was, was really good. I thought the whole story was like really good. Um, it's about you know, it's sweet. It's about like familial trauma, even including the stuff with Fisk because Fisk like does care about her. Yeah, absolutely. But he also cares about her and what he could do for her as like a henchman or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, and what she can do for his empire. Yeah, for sure. But he also cares about her. Like, you could sure, tell that he absolutely. does. Absolutely, yes. So there's, like, a lot of, like, familial trauma stuff. Obviously, Fisk has the trauma of his dad being a piece of shit and then him killing his father and all that. And, like, you know, the stuff with her family, like, while it wasn't, like... What's that? The fucking hammer. Yeah. And while, like, the stuff with her family wasn't, like, super fleshed out, there's some, like, weird stuff there, like, with the familial dynamics, like, who's the cousin and, like, who's whose daughter and grandmother... They kind of like glossed over it a little bit, but either way, like it was kind of nice to see her reconnecting with her family after so long. Like she left in like a traumatic way. Um, right. So I thought that was really good. I thought they did that great. Um, yeah, no, this was a great, like, this is what, like, I, this is what I want as far as like mm -hmm. Marvel content. Like this is an actual unique character. This is not a token character in any means. I mean, maybe you could argue, well, Daredevil is fucking blind, and so a deaf antagonist is kind of like, well, no, it actually is a fascinating, yeah, like that's a fascinating take. Like, I kind of want to see that dynamic, and she's an interesting character. You know, it's not something that they had to token character or change the gender of or anything. Mm -hmm. Tell us stories like that. That's what that's yeah. what people want, right? And I think it's unfortunate because it feels like Disney or Marvel or whoever kind of just said like "fuck you" to the show, which is weird. Um, yeah. So I read a little bit. It was originally meant well, to after be after Secret Wars. Uh... Well, this no, I think this happened before that. Secret Wars was terrible, right? But this was originally meant to be six episodes. And as I said, while right. they were in the writers' room, the budget got cut and they had to trim it down to five. So those last two episodes were pretty incomplete, and you could tell. Um, but Marvel then also released the show in full. Which I remember we talked about when we were like, well, that's not a good sign. They must just be like, wow, just get this out and like be done with it. Because me, you, and every other person, Ed included, shout out to Ed, all yeah. assumed this show was just going to be dog shit because of that decision. Um, so they fucking give us all the episodes in one go. And they do it in January on a fucking Tuesday. So like, you know they did that for like, they didn't want people to watch it. It's just like obvious. Why would they do that? And so it feels like they just kind of had like no faith in the show at all. And it's really strange because it's fucking better than some of the other shit that they put out. It's better than some of the movies that they've put out recently. So I'm, it's actually yeah. a little bit bewildering. 
And again, I expect it to suck ass, but I really enjoyed it. Was it amazing? No. Um, is well, it yeah, but that's because they got caught up in the whole, like, Marvel was really starting to just realize that they were blowing money, and most of their Disney Plus stuff was not being received well, yeah. so they started trimming the fat, and they got caught up, even though that one should have probably been promoted the most like uh, over some of this other stuff I yeah know. i think this is unfortunately a victim of like the sort of re yeah, recalibration the yeah but the thing that's weird too is like why would they treat it like that because this is also the like officially fisk back in the mcu like establishing like this is establishing like a big part of his story going forward clearly he's going to run right. for mayor and fisk as mayor of new york is going to be like a huge deal in the mcu um, so and yeah. you gotta feel like she's gonna cross paths with him in some form of or course. fashion because she's still around. So yeah. yeah, I mean we're gonna get her with like Daredevil and Punisher. Maybe and she's already. What do you, how did you like the Daredevil scene? I mean we didn't really. He uh, showed up and did his thing, and then he was gone, and that was pretty much it. It was good. I mean, it was just like I thought it was choreographed great. It they they yeah they always yeah well they they definitely like good at that. They definitely made an effort to choreograph it like the famous one shot all those one fight shots scene. All, every there's yeah. so many one shots in that in that netflix series it's yeah. ridiculous i mean if you watch echo you could tell like the cut points mm -hmm. when like a fucking you know when like a, a shelf like comes through the foreground or something like that but it, i thought it was really well done and i mean it really is just to serve as the fact that like hey like the netflix stuff is canon with the mcu like here's echo fighting mm -hmm. daredevil during his Netflix, like, because that takes place in the past, so you assume that's during, like, season two or three of Daredevil, that little run-in they have. Mm, I don't know. Mm. Maybe. No, for sure, 100%, because he's wearing his red and his red suit. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, And yeah, Fisk yeah, says yeah, yeah, to her, yeah, have, like, yeah. oh, you took him yeah, on, he's, like, yes, you took him on right. the way like nobody yeah. else could have, so that's right. That's during, like, him and Fisk's, like, beef during the show. Um, but yeah, that was great. I thought it was cool. It was quick. Did its job. Um, but yeah, is it the best show Marvel's put out? No, not by a long shot. One thing I didn't. One thing I was disappointed about um, was that. Well, two things. My I have two gripes with it. One was that I originally thought because this was supposed to be a follow up to Hawkeye, and as you know, I really enjoyed Hawkeye. Loved it. Yeah. One of my favorite things about Hawkeye is it had that like Shane Black sort of vibe to it, probably because it took place around Christmas. It just had his, I don't know, it had a vibe about it that I really liked. It was like the yeah. it was like a buddy cop thing set on Christmas. It just felt like a really Shane Black type of thing. Um, <clears throat> and I really liked it. And I think initially I expected the feel of Echo to be the same feel as that show. Not that it has to be set on Christmas, just like similar thing because she showed up in that show. But you could tell, like, and I, they probably reshot a bunch of it to do so, but you could tell they really tried to make the show feel more like the Daredevil Netflix stuff. Yeah. Um, well, and, yeah, I mean... Has more yeah, of a grit to biggest, it. The biggest difference I would, like, I don't know, the feel of, like, the, the villains and stuff is pretty different. Like, you've got the... I forget the name of the gang, the the jumpsuit gang and tracksuit gang, the tracksuit mafia. The track the tracksuit mafia, you know, that's like your typical like mm -hmm. you know, some Russian gangs in New York where like you get echo, it's more like Dixie Mafia type. Mm. <clears throat> so it's a little bit, you know, I don't know. That's like the biggest difference, but I could see, I don't know. Just yeah, spilled water all over myself. I saw that <laughs> in a hole in your chin. Yeah. Um no, but yeah, I don't know. I thought it was good. I'm excited to see where it goes forward because I don't know. It's funny too because I just watched a, a Screen Crush video, you know, our boy Ryan that we mm -hmm. watched. You still watch him? Shout out to Ryan. You watch him often still? Uh, I, it depends on what I'm watching. Like, I have not, I see that he's watching True Detective, he's covering True Detective, but. Um, I haven't watched any of his breakdowns of True Detective yet. Not to talk shit, they seem a little desperate for content recently. So they've right. been doing a lot of videos out of like, this is how we would reboot the MCU. So anyway, I just saw one, that video is like, here's how the re they should reboot the MCU. And they're talking about like bringing in the X-Men and Fantastic Four and like all this crazy shit that everybody wants. Sure, fine. But I think I'm most excited about these like the street level little universe they're building. 
He rose for hire. Uh, because, I mean, you know, as cool as it was seeing Peter, like, fighting fucking Thanos and shit, like, that's not his wheelhouse. It is right. in some parts, but, like, that's not his fucking wheelhouse. He's your friendly it's neighborhood the, This Spider-Man. is easy. I'm beating up thugs and I'm making witty comments while I'm doing it and I'm trying to get to a bigger crime that's going to, like, lead me to Fisk eventually. Like, that's right. the stuff. But it's really, the, and, but yeah, and it's also really the struggle of Peter, which they've done well in the trilogy for Spider-Man so far, especially in the last one. Like, they've done it well. He's, nobody remembers him. He's fucked. He, like, sacrificed his happiness for whatever. That's, that, that is very Peter Parker. But nobody brings out, like, that in Peter other, more than Kingpin. So, like, I'm very excited to see, like, a Spider-Man Daredevil team up or, like, Punisher versus Daredevil, like, again, like, in a really good, big, bad way. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm like super excited for this like street these street level heroes. Um so yeah, I don't know. That's my thoughts on it. I really liked it. I didn't get the impression that you liked it too much when I asked you. You were kind of like, eh, it was all right. Well, no, I mean I like I said, I enjoyed the story overall. I thought it was fascinating and I'm glad they did it the way they did it. But mm-hmm. like you said, the ending fell a little flat because of the cuts and everything. But overall, I enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it was good. The ending was a little jarring. Spoilers. She like real she like uh, I guess achieves her abilities, which is the other part that I had a problem with, which I'll talk about in a second. I mean, but- yeah, there's Basically, her- they, they give the ultimatum and then he gives her an ultimatum. He's like, you know, come back with me. And she doesn't show up. So he's like, all right, I'm going to wipe out everybody. And then there's this fight in a barn and it's over. Well, she tries Here. to she tries to take away his his trauma. Yes. Because she's a healer. No, that was like, amazing. Use, just like was an amazing ancestors. use of powers. Yeah. But he rejected it is the interesting thing. Right. It didn't work. So he rejected her trying to heal him. And he's like, what did you do to me? And then like, it just cuts and he's getting into a fucking SUV and it's like over. Yeah. It was just very jarring. And you could tell like, uh, mm-hmm. of course it was like a victim to the budget cuts or whatever. Um, I don't like that. They changed her powers from the comic book. I understand why, because her powers in the comic book is she is able to echo who she's fighting and their ability. She's right. able to mimic them. There's another villain in the comic books that we've seen briefly who also has that yeah. ability, and that's Taskmaster. So yeah. I understand why they changed that up. However, I didn't like the fact that her powers were just boiled down to, like, glowy hands and, like, whatever the fuck she did. Um, well, yeah, we're not... I mean, I think it's sort of meant to be vague because, like you said, they didn't really go into it because it's related to well, they, her origin and the Choctaw origin. So there's, like, some special magic there that well they only really said like she, her ancestors echo through her and they showed each one right. it's like the healer the the one who's cunning she just has like the characteristics of all her ancestors and she's basically the avatar without like the bending you know um yeah she, she has know. like all their experiences in her so she's able to build off of that and like to give her a power they just defaulted to like oh she could heal stuff so which is fine but i would have liked this i think it would be cooler if you know Oh, I she, think we might see her powers expand. Maybe is what I think. I, I don't think, think her, that we are limiting it. I, I like I said is, yeah. I think they kept it vague, and I actually thought it was a twist. I thought she was going to use her powers to beat some ass and shit, and then mm-hmm. it was like that healing power. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. But I think we're just she's just discovering what she can do. Is yeah, what I think. I think it would be cool to, to see on screen her like. Remember how like Tony fucking when he was fighting Cap in Civil War, like the mm-hmm. suit analyzed his fight pattern. For oh, Tony, yeah. like it'd be cool if she was able to, if she had that power of like right. analytics to then fight back. That's how I would kind of visualize it in live action. So I was a little disappointed in that. And of course, and then my last gripe is that I just kind of wish it was longer. I would have liked to see more of it. I thought it was good. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's Echo. A shame that nobody probably watched it. <laughs> uh, and it's good. yeah, I mean, it is. Um. So speaking of other stuff, I know you just watched it. I also just watched it because I didn't get to watch it last night. But what'd you think of the last episode of True Detective? What was this, episode four? Uh, yeah, it was good. Um, it was this was a slower one. This where, like the, I don't know. I guess they made some progress on the uh, the case. Yeah, but they really didn't. It was was more of a self. There was a lot of self pity in this one, and uh, I don't know. It was a little slow for me, but it was good. Hmm. 
I uh, I liked it. I yeah. thought it was good. Um, it, was, it shows the the desolateness of you know where they're at up there. Yeah, I didn't. And why there's so many suicides and shit, but just felt like it just kept going. I'm like, man, this is starting to depress me. Holy fuck. Well, I don't know if you saw the TikTok that I posted. I responded to another TikTok because TikTok has. I know you don't spend a lot of time on TikTok, but TikTok I has. I don't use TikTok. TikTok yeah. has a feature called stitching, which is actually really cool. So if you see another creator's like video, you could stitch it, which is basically you live responding to that. So basically it right. shows like the section of his yeah, video that tech, you're responding to. The, yeah. yeah. So I mm -hmm. did that on somebody like theorizing about True Detective and he, and it seems like a lot of people who are talking about this season are really like focusing on the potential paranormal and supernatural right. elements of it. And I just responded saying like, I don't think there's anything supernatural going on. And I still stand by that despite what we saw in this episode as well. I don't think we're ever going to find out. And I said this last week, I just think the show is, is really like walking the line of the potential of supernatural and, uh, you know, uh, supernatural right. it's all related to a greater supernatural thing that we're never going to know about because I, no i don't think it is actually my i don't think we're ever going to find out one way or the other but the way that i see it is that what you just said they living they're living in perpetual night like that fucks with your head right yeah so you have that uh navarro comes from she has mental illness in her family clearly right mhm mm and then these people like you're living in a small town that's like steeped in folklore and like tribal stories and well, stuff like that. Well, it's all like tradition that. because right. it's, I mean, the, the farthest you go from the equator, the harshest life conditions are. Right. And you basically have to do the same thing over and over if you want to fucking survive in that bullshit yeah. up there. So I don't, I don't think we're actually seeing anything paranormal. And I think, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, what's, what's the, the main cop's name? I can't think of her name. Um, uh, Jody. Yeah, Jodie Foster's character. I can't think of her name. Anyhow. Yeah. She's like the peg of, like, reality, I think. She's just like, there's no fucking... She said it in this episode. She's like, there's no ghost, there's no afterlife, there's no heaven, there's no hell, it's just us. Like, get your shit together. Yeah, I don't... I think that she seems to be a little bit scarred on that front, though, because she did, like, confront... She, she confronted her partner there, and she's like, what did you see? You know, and she's like, I didn't see anything. She's all bullshit, so... It seems like she's she's unsure. She wants to believe um, that it, that there's nothing there and there's nothingness, but she also kind of wants to believe maybe that it's plausible that something is happening. And that's why she asked her, "What did you see when that shit? You right, know, we were there." And so I don't know. I'm. I think she's torn, and I don't know. We also just got her uh, a little bit of her backstory. Apparently, her son yes. died, so we're finding mm -hmm. that out. O Odell was that his name? No, something like that. No, yeah. I don't. No, I don't think so. I don't remember, but it wasn't that. Maybe it was close. Um, Liz, Liz Danvers is her name. But yeah, so her, she she lost it because I've been confused about like the whole connection of like f familial connections. It took me like two episodes to figure out that that Pryor was like married. I don't quite understand what the relationship is with her stepdaughter Leah Holden. Holden, there you go, yeah. yeah. So he died. The fucking, uh, the bear is like his toy and people are having visions of it. Very bizarre stuff. Um, but again, I don't think it's anything supernatural. And I have a feeling like, I'm a little bit worried it's going in the direction of, um, uh, what was the fucking show we were watching with the fucking girls who get lost in the fucking woods, and the plane crashes, the bumblebees or whatever the fuck? Yellow Jackets. Uh, yes. Um, I, I, I'm i starting to get the feeling it's going in that direction where, like, they tease you with all this paranormal shit that they never deliver on, which is fine if they do it that way. I just wanted to... Because in, in Yellow Jackets, as you and I have talked about, it feels like it's just baity. It's like there's no substance to it. You know what I mean? It's just like, ha-ha, oh, we're fucking with the audience. There has to be something there, a little bit of, like, you know, right. it has to fit in uh, and help build the story. So... I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I'm enjoying it. I think it's an interesting case. You know, we learned this episode that, like, I don't know, there's some fucking minds that, like, 
some shit went down in. We don't really know. We didn't really learn anything. Well, actually. I mean, yeah. I mean, the first thing I thought of was like, so what? It, it, it could be the company, like they were keeping her and where she stumbled. She was sleeping with a dude and stumbled down into one of their drill sites with a generator. And I don't know, but you know, the whole power flicking thing it was, you know, somebody's killing the power. And the dude had the jacket. Wrong guy had the jacket. Yeah. All drugged up in the. Uh, right. And then I wonder, old excavator. I'm wondering right now that, it, okay, so we know that they tied it a little bit to season one. Are those just little fun little nods and Easter eggs to the season one and to the audience who's been paying attention? Or is there like really some connected shit going down? Because if you remember season three, the one with Mahershala Ali, it was connected to the first season. Mm-hmm. Like the missing girl from season three, it she was kidnapped by the same like cabal of rich fucking weirdos in that area that Dora Lang was killed by. So like, I uh, I don't know. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it could be like there's some occult somewhere that is managing all this weird, twisted stuff to do their bidding, <laughs> and it's all broken up. But we'll never know because that story has never been a true detective crime that's ever been charged. So they're just, well, that was teasing it in front of you. Well, that was the point of season one and three season one ended with them. They got their guy who killed Dora Lang, but they, Mm -hmm. they, they knew that they weren't going to be able to like close the whole case because it goes too deep, too far up. There's too many like powerful people involved. It always does. And that's what they're dangling. And it just turned out that it was like, you know, a fucking old Mm -hmm. rich family who does some weird occult shit. Like you said, and then this one person in the family just happens to kill some people. Like, that's all it was, really. Um, and then season three was the same thing. Like, she was just kidnapped by, like, the same group of people and didn't end up dying. So, like, he solved the case as an older man and was like, all right, well, she's alive and well, so I'm just going to let it go. So maybe this is kind of the same thing. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, I know. I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's getting a lot of criticism for the, uh, the fact that it is teasing these supernatural elements. Um, and I don't, I think people are kind of like, it's a lot of people that are like being gatekeepy. They're like standing the first season, which I have said many times. First season is one of the best seasons of television, I think ever, but why should we diminish this? It's just different. It doesn't have to be exactly the fucking same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, did you see that, uh, Nick Pizzolatto himself had some, uh, unsavory things to say? I did not. No. All right. So. Nick Pizzolatto was the writer of the original season. He then wrote season two. I think he wrote season three. I'm not 100% sure. Um, Yeah, he he had a writing credit on every episode for the first three seasons. So this fourth season is all Issa Lopez. um, And she did that horror movie from 2017 called Tigers Are Not Afraid, which I haven't seen. um, But it was like a breakthrough for her. So he... He's still executive producing, but he said on, uh, apparently on social media, um, he's not involved in any capacity with this, with the fourth season in terms of like creatively. Um, but he apparently there's an alleged comment that he made. Apparently the post has been deleted, but he said that, um, some of the plot points from season four that do connect to the first season, he called, he said they're so stupid. And apparently he told one fan, I certainly did not have any input on this story or anything else. Can't blame me. So, um, I don't know again, how true that is. I find it odd that like a writer producer would, would like out. So this is uh, an actual deleted post or an alleged deleted post. We, is a screenshot of a post. Is I don't, what you're saying? I don't think there's any, yeah, I think there's, there's some screenshots. So, so basically a Twitter user said, I really hope Matthew had enough because Matthew McConaughey is still an executive producer. Um, right. so apparently this is the screenshot. I really hope Matthew had enough respect for what you all did with season one to not show up in night country. Can't believe HBO didn't heard that Russ dad shows up at, in it as a ghost or something like what I think this is before that episode aired. Then Nick Pizzolatto allegedly responds. I certainly did not have any input on the story or anything else. Can't blame me. Matthew doesn't show up, nor would he. And then the original poster responds. That's a relief on both accounts. Um, 
Yeah, that was probably leaky because it hadn't aired, so he had to delete it. That makes sense. And then another person said, do you still have the season one lore document? It used to be around on Google talking about how the Tuttles have a local construction business and whatnot. Apparently they fund an Arctic science research station now. Laughy face. And then Nick Pizzolatto responds, ha ha, so stupid. So, I don't know. Hmm. I, I find it hard that he would, like, just openly shit on something that he's still an executive producer of. But but maybe there's bad blood there because maybe they didn't ask him to come. I don't, I don't really know what the, yeah, yeah. what the case is. But um, Interesting. then Issa Lopez apparently uh, commented in response, and she said, um, so she was asked about his alleged criticisms. And she said, I believe that every storyteller has a very specific, peculiar, and unique relation to the stories they create. And whatever his reactions are, he's entitled to them. That's his prerogative. I wrote this with profound love for the work he made and love for the people that loved it. And it is a reinvention, and it is different. And it's done with the idea sitting down around a fire, and let's have some fun and have some feelings and have some thoughts. And anybody that wants to join is welcome. And apparently Variety also reached out to Nick Pizzolatto's like PR team or whatever um, for additional comment. I don't know if they got what they were looking for. Uh, but anyhow, I thought that was interesting that he's p potentially out here like talking shit or whatever. Um, but it seems that <clears throat> there's a lot of people like criticizing it too for some reason, which is kind of weird. I don't know. I, I've, I've thought it's been good. Yeah, no, it's been good. Like I said, I like, um, you know, when they're working on the case and they're trying to get breakthroughs when it gets like into the weird, the weird stuff and slow stuff. And like I, the relationship I mean, with uh, the Pryor's kid, uh, you know, is that, is that her son? Is that her stepson? Well, no, that's so Pryor. Originally, I thought Pryor was her son. I thought right, I, I did thought, too. I thought her dad. Oh, Pryor's dad was her ex, and I thought they were like a little, a little family thing, but it's not. Well, they, I mean, I do you get the assumption that they were at least a couple at one no, time? No, no, no. She just took his job. When the guy who we saw in this episode, her her boss, the guy who played Mal Malekith in fucking Thor: The Dark right. World, did you know that that was Malekith? By the way, did you realize that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. When when he comes back, oh, I'm sorry. We learn that he basically sent her to this town, Ennis, she replaced Pryor's father. So that's their little bad blood. But in the first two episodes, I thought it was like a relationship thing. Yeah, I did too. So Pryor's just a young cop who kind of obviously looks up to her. Right. And like does whatever she asks, despite her being a little bit selfish in that regard. Yes. Well, not a little bit, like ridiculously right. selfish. Yeah. And then there's yes, obviously Christmas Eve. Uh, I need you to go pick somebody up because I'm too fucking drunk and get but, this shit done. Yeah, I mean, but also she's the chief and like he's a fucking cop. Like you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the other thing too is like, and uh, this is where I'm a little confused, right? Not confused. I just I don't know that I'm buying it. There was supposed to be like a beef between Navarro and Liz. And the beef doesn't seem that big of a deal. It, I think, like, even the original, like, the trailers before this came out was, like, building that beef up between them two. Like, two detectives who fucking have bad blood have to work together again to, like, solve this case. It's really just that, like, Liz kind of closed the case on the, the chick who died. Probably prematurely, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But now we're learning there's, like, a bit more to their relationship where clearly they, like, executed the dude who, like, beat his wife to death. We just haven't seen it play out yet. And that's very right. reminiscent of season one, where they killed fucking the the um, the drug guy, the meth guy, who was wearing the gas mask in that one yes. episode. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. So that's a little bit weak, I think. But overall, I'm enjoying it. I think it's good. Is it as good as season one? I don't think so yet. No, but, it is. Yeah, it's hard to top. It's a high bar. Yeah. I like. I mean, yeah, it, it is a high bar. So I don't know. We'll see. But all the people criticizing it about that it's like paranormal or supernatural. It's like a. It's probably not, and it's going to be left for inter. Guaranteed, they're not going to answer that question. It's going to be left to be open for interpretation. Whatever you think is what it is. Okay. So don't have your hopes up about that. And secondly, people are acting as if season one didn't have paranormal elements to it. 
It did. Yes, it did. Fucking Rust saw visions every episode of birds forming shapes and all sorts of shit. <laughs> the show leaves it open for interpretation. Like, yes, he was embedded with, like, gangs and shit undercover and did, like, heavy drugs and shit, and he explains that. So that's probably the reason for his fucking psychotic Psychosis, breaks. yeah. But either way, the show plays with it. Even in the last episode, when you see a fucking portal open up after they kill the fucking dude. So, like, I don't know. It's like, what are you, what are you fucking annoyed about? Yeah, yeah. There's, that stuff doesn't annoy me. It's the, and I guess they're all a little bit slow at times, but. I I, I think I think the pace of the show is good given the fact that they like it fits the setting. You know what I mean? Right. So no, it does. Yeah. yeah. I haven't felt that it's drawn out or anything. I think each episode definitely like is go it's like it has yeah, no, forward I felt momentum. Like every episode moved the case forward a little bit. This one I didn't feel like moved it ahead as much. It was a lot more like character. Mm -hmm. Let's develop some of these characters a little bit, which is fine, but Yeah. And when you're developing like solemnness and solitude and depression and alcoholism, it's like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Some of it's a little bit um I think predictable too. Like obviously the you know, uh Pryor's father. Sister. Oh, yeah. yeah. Obviously Pryor's father was like getting scammed or whatever, sending money to some oh, yeah, fucking yeah. fake person. Yeah, that's yeah, called that one. Yeah. Like that was obvious. Um pretty obvious that Navarro's sister was gonna kill herself at some point. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's pretty obvious that the, her boss who just came to town is like definitely dirty and like there to try to put a lid on this shit. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think a little bit of it is a little bit, uh, predictable, but the case itself is still interesting enough that I'm like invested. I kind of, oh yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm interested to see what happens. Well, but. when they brought in the, the vet and he's like, these guys, <laughs> They weren't like, they didn't, it wasn't hypothermia. They didn't just go to sleep, <laughs> these motherfuckers. Yeah, they died first and then they was like, froze. Okay, that's fascinating. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, but yeah, if anybody's watching it who's watching this, let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm enjoying it. True so. detective. Yeah. It's yeah. Good so far. Uh, the, the, the end of this last episode was a little bit cheesy, where he's like, he's hiding out in night country. <laughs> it's like, okay, dude, we get that's the name of the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah. Well, it's not, you know, it's that's not... like the supernatural, like, did she really see footsteps? Yeah, again, I, I think it's all going to be left open for interpretation. I don't think, like, I've watched enough horror shit, as have you. I've watched enough sci-fi. I've watched enough X-Files to know that, like, we're probably not going to get a definitive answer of of what's going on here in terms of like right. her visions and stuff or the dead showing up in ennis all the, like you know so uh, you have to you're gonna have to just accept that but um but yeah so the hardcore fans can discuss it on the internet yeah Let's get into the news of the week, Dusty. I have to open with a, right. something that I just read prior to us uh, getting on this call. Mm -hmm. I hope it's not in your... I'm not going to step on your toes, but I just read that Jurassic World is set for a reboot in 2025. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, well, yeah, it, it is. In the, Why? Yeah, David Leake is in... Well, David Leake Leach is in uh, talks to direct the new Jurassic World movie. Yeah. Um, but they're bringing in David Cope. Uh, he's like the original OG Jurassic Park scriptwriter. He's going to be penning the script for this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, apparently it's an all-new storyline and characters. And it actually is also supposedly has a July 2025 release. And that's like supposed to be like within a week of Superman. So mm. good luck, Jurassic World, on your reboot. Superman's, coming out of me. Yeah. Superman's going to get a little competition. Yeah. I really hope but, Superman uh, yeah, doesn't I flop. Did see that. I don't know where you go, Jurassic World, because they're supposed to take it where the Michael Crichton books went, where like the, you know it's like tech on the dinosaurs and their weapons and whatnot. But. I just don't care at all about this world <laughs> yeah, anymore. It's, like Jurassic yeah. Park One was like a great fucking movie. It still is. It still holds up. I watched it mm -hmm. within the last six months. It's very good. Um, it's classic for a reason. It broke boundaries in terms of CGI and other technology. It was great. 
Jurassic the rest that tech still holds up today. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like the CGI, like you could tell it's like old, but like it still looks yeah. good for what it was. Mm-hmm. Um Jurassic Park two and three, not so much. And then the worlds like yeah, they they're, just, all right. they're all just like not very good anymore. And I just don't care. Like every store is the it same. It loses it's like, the allure. Yeah. Uh, we've got a park. Dinosaurs are breaking out of the park. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, uh, as, and at a certain magically, point, magically some people are going to survive and it's going to be okay. <laughs> and then you got this one dude who is now like talking to the dinosaurs and the dinosaurs are like picking sides and shit. It's like, it's like, what are we doing mm-hmm. here folks? Like, mm-hmm. and then at some point, like you have to like, you know, it's one thing to suspend your disbelief, but like, it's totally another thing to just be like, I don't know. At some point you have to just be like, yo, is anybody going to learn to like not have dinosaurs anymore? Like it clearly isn't working out for us. Like, let's just ditch the whole like reviving dinosaurs for theme park. Yeah. Thing. It's a lot of people have died, Yeah, but you know, there's money to be made. And so people will profit off death all the time. Yeah, that's true. I guess. I don't Shout know. out Lockheed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what do you got for us <laughs> right. this week, Dusty? <clears throat> well, we got the Super Bowl coming up and we did talk about how, Deadpool 3 is probably, the trailer is probably going to be out during the Super Bowl. Apparently it's not called Deadpool um, 3. Yeah, we'll see a trailer. Um, but apparently there's some other trailers that we're probably going to get to see too. Alleged so far, Wicked. Mm-hmm. Have you heard about this movie? No. This is like a prequel to The Wizard of Oz, wherein the Good Witch and the Bad Witch knew each other and were friends became before it- they became the Good Witch and the Bad Witch. So it's based off the musical? Yeah, Wicked, yes, it is. Okay. Correct. Um, so, yeah, the, we're probably going to get a trailer for that. We're going to get a trailer for Knuckles, apparently. Oh, um, the Sonic And thing. then, yes, Inside you... Out 2. Uh-huh. We're going to get the new, what is the new element, I think, is... I don't know, I didn't the see the first one. new feeling is Anxiety. Did you, you didn't see the first one? Oh, that's a good movie. No. Speaking of the Marvin Super Bowl, that, I guess. did you watch the commercial that I posted in the Discord? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. And as that's I wrote to you guys, whoever made that deserves to be like the boss of Hollywood forever. It is yeah, so Sir fucking Patrick funny. With, yeah. You shut your face, Barrymore. They're on the head. And it's like, it just leans um, into like the, rev- the, like the recent like social media resurgence of like, Creed and how they're just a fucking meme at this point. It's so funny. It was so well done. Well, they were a big part of a Super Bowl back in the day. Yeah, they fucking performed that song at the Super Bowl. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why it's good. Speaking of performances, um, this is totally unrelated. I just want to say, did you you don't watch the fucking Grammys or anything, right? Uh, I do not, but I saw some of the news, like Killer Mike and the rest yeah. of it. Immediately after getting three awards in this first time in 20 well, years. Well, there's like a, a meme going around that people are like, who is Killer Mike? I don't know if it's true or not, but like, it's bizarre. But well, I... He's made a resurgence this year, so, I mean, like I said, it's been 20 years since he won a Grammy. I mean, I've always pretty much known who he was, and also, I mean, maybe I'm more tapped in because he was like part of like Bernie's campaign and all that shit. But also, right. they had fucking Tracy Chapman... She did a performance for the first time in like 15 years. She did Fast Car with uh, what's his name? The guy who covered it and won like a country music award for it. Uh, uh, Blake, he... I can't think of his name. Blake Shelton. I don't was... know, something like that. I don't know if it was Blake Shelton. But Not Blake Shelton. I, I, I couldn't tell you. But anyway. I know you're talking about back. Yeah. That was cool. Got me emotional. She fucking got a standing ovation, mm-hmm. deservedly. That's a great song, and she's a legend. Yeah, so I heard cool. about the performance. I have not seen it yet. I have not watched any of the performances. He, whoever he uh, is, I can't think of his name. When he covered it, I remember he got a lot of flack because people were like, "How dare you cover a black woman's song as a white man?" And it's like, dude, shut up! Like, what? Like, he yeah, <laughs> first fuck, of all, get the fuck out of here. He, first of all, a, it's not a terrible cover. I don't really like that version of country, that like arena country, but it's not terrible. And second, she owns the rights to that song. As an original writer, like she owns, she gets like more than half of the royalties for the cover. So she's making fucking bank. You should right. be happy for her. Because yeah. in the 90s, I'm sorry, that song came out, I think in, that song came out in what, the late 80s? I think. Uh, um, man, let me see. Because I have a point. And then we can get back to the news. Um, 1988, that song came out. So 
1988, she did something that people fight tooth and nail to achieve today, is that she retained ownership of all her fucking, of, of that song and like her stuff that she wrote. There's just a whole big public fucking thing about fucking Taylor Swift trying to get her, you know, the right, the ownership to her music. So, Tracy yeah. Chapman is a fucking legend. Props to her. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was cool Absolutely. to see her get a standing ovation. Anyhow, so what else you got for us, Dusty? Um, we're also going to get a Quiet Place Day One trailer. Is that oh, what you're God. talking about? Um, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. We're probably going to get a trailer for that. Um, that I'm excited but for. Who knows? Who knows for what else we will or won't get? I think Warner Brothers, Sony, Netflix, and Amazon are all setting this one out. Sony generally <laughs> always sets it out, uh, so that, that makes sense. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe, possibly, this one wasn't listed, but it's on my list of maybe an Alien Romulus teaser at oh. least. Is that the show? Because no, that's Fetty Alvarez's movie. Oh, um, that's coming out, and it's coming out this year. I don't know exactly when. I don't know if we have a good date on it, but it's done, and people have seen it. So we've got to be getting something soon. So uh, that's my. Uh, guess of what we may or may not see at the Super Bowl. Anywho, is this a prequel, sequel? Like, what is it? <clears throat> uh, the, yeah, this is a pre. Mm, uh, this takes place on Earth, so it's a prequel before Ripley. Okay, so, yeah, it's a prequel. Well, yeah. I All think right. I think that's the movie. Maybe I'm getting the mixed up with Noah Hawley's show. I don't know. He's uh, a good. Anyway, uh, he's a good filmmaker. Yeah. He made that Evil Dead. I'm looking remake. forward to both the show and the movie. Um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I, as you know, I'm not a big fan of uh, Prometheus. I thought it was pretty bad. Um, yeah. Looking back on it at the time, I was like, "Oh, this is fucking good." But I, Prometheus is just not a good movie. I don't give a fuck what Covenant anybody says. And, and Covenant was terrible. But Prometheus, <laughs> Prometheus. People like Prometheus. I do not think that's a good movie at all. And I will die. On I mean, that there was hill. some stupid. Yeah. And let's let's get off of this weird planet we never explored and take our mask off and get oh, right. exposed to the dude steps so, yeah, yeah. No the dude steps so off the dumb. fucking ship in like the first three minutes and it's like it's like take just in his off. in his fucking face there's like the fucking spores it's so it's just stupid he's like oh what's yeah. this <laughs> fucking just it's like with a ray doing a rail of some alien allergens it's just really bizarre i don't know i did not like that movie yeah and it was like so vague the origins of man it's, uh, it's just very very yeah like, no, this convoluted. is gonna actually have xenomorphs in it so we're getting like a, an actual aliens movie but damon lindelof anyway. wrote i don't know he wrote prometheus he was one of the co-writers on it yeah uh, so i'm assuming that this show well he's not involved in the show but I'm thinking yeah. of what's his name. Damon Lindelof is the guy that did uh, Watchmen. The Watchmen show. I got confused for a second. Scratch that. Cut that from the record. Right. What else you got? Well, on to WB News. Uh, what did, we didn't talk about it. Millie Alcock is officially cast as Supergirl. Yep. Uh, James Gunn made a comment on it. Uh, apparently, he had her picked out over a year ago after only read it after having only read the comics. When he was doing the research for the movie, mm -hmm. he said, I was watching House of the Dragon and thought she might have the edge, grace, and authenticity we needed for the DCU Supergirl. So while they did all those casting calls and everything, he's liked her for a while. So it's not surprising that he picked her. Okay. Yeah. I kind of don't um, give a fuck. I think I expressed that last episode. Yeah. I just don't like the concept of Supergirl, but whatever. I'm sure she'll be good. Yeah, and yeah. Matthew Vaughn had some interesting comments about the uh, Millie casting, uh, as well as James and uh, Safran's decision to start casting. Actually called it weird. He says, they don't have a director. Um, when they asked me to do The Flash, I was like, not, if I, not unless I can recast the whole thing. Like, you don't start casting for a movie if you don't have a director. So do they have a director or not for this movie? We don't know, but they're casting for it. And he thinks it's weird. He said he'd love to direct it, though, if they ask, because he thinks that Millie is a great pick, but he does think it's weird that they are already casting and they haven't named a director. I've seen some of his comments being taken wildly out of context in the uh, Zack Snyder fandom, that he's like, oh, really? he refuses to work with James Gunn and, like, all this crazy shit. But <laughs> speaking of Matthew Vaughn, though, like, what's going on? He with said he'd do, he said he'd do Supergirl. 
Sure. What's going on with fucking uh, this movie that's uh, Argyle? It's like a flop. Oh yeah, it's not doing too hot. I don't. I don't know. I think it had like um, a two hundred million dollar budget, and it only made like twenty or something in the opening yeah, weekend. Yeah, it did not do well domestic opening. I didn't look at the final numbers, but I did see that it wasn't doing well. But <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. That maybe that just like big budget movies are not always going to make it. So Hollywood's going to have to reconsider. Like, we can make twenty five to fifty million dollar movies and make profit. We don't have to make a quarter of a million dollar movie every time and hope it makes a billion dollars because that's how you lose money. Yeah. But they're in a race for it. So I don't know. I mean, the movie looks good. It looks fun. It looks entertaining. So I don't know why it's not doing well. I haven't really looked into it. Okay. I, um, I like his movies. Kingsman is like, yeah, King, no, Kingsman yeah. is one of the best comic book movies like I think ever made. Just saying. It's a good one. And so is Kick Ass, one. just for that matter. But go ahead. Uh, Brad Schwartz, president of CW, was talking about how even though the company is pivoting its content, we've talked about this a few times, uh, he said there is room for current shows if they can be profitable and successful, leaving rooms and hopes that Superman and Lois season four could actually get renewed to a season five, Dan. Really? Yeah. Hold on, not to interrupt you, but the thing that I, the Matthew Vaughn thing that I heard about was that um, he expressed interest in potentially doing a Red Sun movie with Henry Cavill. Oh, I don't know. Um, I heard about that, and I don't remember his comments exactly. But I, I don't. He, he expressed interest. I think he expressed interest in a Red Sun. I don't know that he expressed interest in a Red Sun with Henry Cavill. Matthew Vaughn wants to team up with Henry Cavill again, but the, here's his comments. I thought Red Sun was one of the cleverest comics I'd ever read in the current world we're living in. It's certainly become a lot more relevant because ignorance causes more issues. And I think the more we learn about Russia and the Russian history, wow, could you imagine remaking Red Sun with Henry Cavill? That would be an interesting movie. So the Snyder people oh. have like oh. really attached themselves to this. Interesting. I mean, I, I would love to see a Red Sun adaption. I don't know about with Henry Cavill. I think we should probably just focus on making a good Superman movie first and get yeah, over well, this yeah. like evil version or alt version of Superman for a while <laughs> because it dominates media. It does. Like, you have Red Sun, you have the fucking, uh, the video games, the, what, what is that one called? The fucking bad Superman? Oh, was the Suicide Squad. Well, there's um, that, but before that, predating that. Well, no, but predating that is uh, the. Uh, um, there's just always an evil fucking Superman. That's like the only thing people could come up with. What if Superman's bad? What if Superman's bad? What if Superman's bad? It's the whole reason Homelander exists, fucking bright, like all this shit. We haven't gotten Bizarro this... Superman is in Superman and Lois, though. I mean, you get the. Bizarro's a great character, but we also haven't gotten a good Superman film in 45 years. So let's maybe focus on that first. And then, well, I think James Gunn is, I think that's his focus. If they're going to do Elseworld stuff though, I, I mean, I'd be totally fine with him. Yeah, for Matthew sure. Vaughan. No, no, for sure. But like bring it in later on. You know what I mean? Anyhow, yeah. I'm sorry. Go back to what you're saying. My bad for dis derailing you. So Superman and oh, Lois no. season yeah. four. No, might... but yeah, Superman and Lois season four, it's going to be 10 episodes. It still doesn't have a release date, but like I said, Brad Schwartz is open to the idea of continuing it. He said, if we have something that has a fan base and it is profitable, there's no reason not to keep it going. Again, there's no talk or anything of them doing anything past season 10, but yeah. now that they've cut, cut the, um, the budget down, we'll see how it does. Yeah. I'm a little bit upset about that. Cause like, the whole, the whole. I'll go finish uh, season three when I, we get a release date for season four. Yeah, I mean, I'll feel the pressure. The strength of the show is relies heavily on the fact that it's about Clark's relationships with those people. Yeah. So the fact that they've taken them out and just are using them as like kind of cameos is a little disappointing, but we'll see. Um. Okay, and here's a piece of interesting news. Uh, I like this is the last piece of w new, WB news. Sam Raimi and Rob Tappert's Ghost House Pictures hired Sebastian uh, Vanacek to co-write as well as direct the untitled Evil Dead movie that they're going to do. It's reportedly a spinoff. I don't know. 
this guy is a new and upcoming director. He did the Vermin movie. Uh, it's that spider movie that I sent you the trailer about. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, where they use real spiders, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it, it won uh, Best Picture and Best Director in its North American premiere at Fantastic Fest, hmm. which was the first festival it came to. And it was also invited to the, the Sidges Film Festival. I think that's in France. Uh, where it earned a nomination for best motion picture and won a special jury prize. So like that might be a good horror movie that we want to put on the list, but he's <laughs> in charge of the next evil dead movie. So um, maybe, I mean, his, his initial directorial debut won some awards at some festivals and now everybody wants to work for them. So they need to just bring back just the show. The Ash versus evil dead. It was good, but. Yeah, I mean, Evil Dead's in a weird spot because Bruce Campbell is is yeah. retired. So this is uh this is them trying to. I, I would imagine this is like, hey, you made a great first movie. Here's a franchise. Can you make it good? Because that's where like, if this is a spinoff and he makes it successful, then they can just run with that, and that will be their the Evil Dead universe. But well, I guess they're just gonna keep making spinoffs until they find one that hits, and then go with that one. I really enjoyed. Evil Dead Rise. Yeah, it was good. But I do, I had a conversation with my buddy George about it. He didn't like it. It wasn't great. Not the best in the franchise, but it was good. Yeah, he didn't like it. He said it felt very generic, like a very generic horror movie. A little bit. And he was like, he basically said it just didn't feel like Evil Dead, which I agree. It doesn't feel like Evil Dead. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was the, you know, obvious nostalgia because they're deadites, but yeah, other yeah. than that, like, it's a generic Deadite film. Is kind of right. so. I agree with that point, and and he also was uh, is of the opinion like you just can't have Evil Dead without Ash. Like it just doesn't work. And I also agree with that. So I see them obviously trying to like build this universe without Ash. I just don't know if it's really gonna. I mean, if they could find somebody that has the wit and the humor that can add, because nobody's really going to try and make this one funny. This one was more like, I a, know. Yeah. A modern scary. Like I want a, I want a funny evil dead movie. Right. Everybody wants what evil dead is. That's what it is. That's why the show was so good. Yeah. yeah. The show was a good blend of what evil dead two is and army of darkness. It was yeah. like a perfect hybrid of those two things. Maybe the cartoon will be, I don't know. We'll see. They have that. They had yeah, the animation we'll coming back, right. and yeah, I I don't okay. know. I feel like they should just try to do a show with with Bruce Campbell and like maybe give him like a limited role or something. I don't know. He's old. Like, how long could the guy keep fucking fighting deadites? But I get you know. not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I get old. it. I get it. All right. Well, that's all of WB on to Disney. Um, first one up, my time to shine. Hello drops some information to us on X. Apparently confirmed that John Watts is not coming back to direct Tom Holland's Spider-Man four. Mm. Um, and so apparently it's uh, anybody's guess who's going to get that job. Is that official? Um, well, my time to sh- shine. Hello confirmed it. Yeah. So, okay. So not crazy. Not like super confirmed is what I'm trying to say. Not see well, yeah. I mean, they confirmed it, but yeah, it's not been confirmed by the studio or or himself, right. for that matter. So we'll see. I don't know. Um, and then on to Armor Wars, uh, Sam Rockwell. I'm waiting for the phone call. Saw I haven't that. got the phone call yet. Is what he said about joining up. Of course. He was asked by Jimmy Fallon on the Tonight Show, and if he's under NDA, then he can't say anything, anyways. So I mean, they're definitely bringing him back. Justin Hammer, he's coming. Yeah, back. they. Yeah, he just said no. How are you gonna have Armor um, Wars without like Stark Industries, like only competitor, basically? Yeah, and well, to add some fuel to the fire to that, producer Nate Moore addressed why it's a movie instead of a show because this was originally supposed to be like a show, mm-hmm. but. um Nate said, uh, yeah, the budget really, I mean, not to <clears throat> shoot down any of the Disney plus shows, but the scale of what we wanted to do with this thing, it was not going to work on a show's budget that they were going to give us. So we needed to make it a feature length film. So <clears throat> right. maybe they are paying Sam Rockwell to come back. I would imagine so. Um, so yeah. Okay. That was an interesting piece. And then the last piece of. Disney here. There's some more turnover for Thunderbolts. Um, strike and other delays have caused 
some to step away in that. The latest is Io uh, Edabiri. Mm-hmm. She's being replaced by Geraldine Viswanathan. No, this character was going to be the assistant to Julia Louis Travis's Valentina or Allegra Devontaine. Okay. Um, so yeah, that character, that's a character replacement that happened. We've had a few of these like dropout recasts from the Thunderbolts because of the strike thing. So that's unfortunate, but it happens. Yeah. And that's the, the last bit of Disney news. So we'll go down to the et cetera stuff. We already talked about the Jurassic world thing. Right. Um, here's one for you. Michelle Pfeiffer. I don't know if you saw this one is in talks to star in a Yellowstone spirit spinoff taking place in Northern California. And it is not the, um, holy shit, I can't think of the family name right now. The Duttons? Uh, the Duttons, yeah. It's a different family. And this is tied to the Matthew McConaughey. Mm. So we've got some more information about this, the Matthew McConaughey spinoff of Yellowstone. Apparently it's going to take place in North Cal, and it's going to be a different family. It's not going to be the Duttons. So we have Matthew McConaughey tied to this as well as Michelle Pfeiffer. And it's still moving forward. So, And that's on Paramount. Um, Sad thing is I kind of don't give a fuck about that show anymore. Well, yeah. I think it kind of like the luster kind of lost its luster after the, well, the strike happened. But also. And then the legalities happened with. He, um, yeah, there was Costner all that weird and, stuff. But also, I don't think the last season or the first half of the last season was very good, to be honest. Like, I thought yeah. it was kind of boring. It was just a lot of like bullshit politics that I kind of don't give a fuck about. Um, you think Taylor's getting a little stretched too thin with doing too much with what he did, Mayor of Kingstown and Yellowstone, and maybe um, he like he's got uh, four or five different shows now and a, I the think, movies he's doing. Now Yellowstone for me was good for a particular reason. Like I like a lot of like the we've talked about this. Obviously, we covered the show on our YouTube channel, but mm-hmm. I do love the fact that it makes me it it shines a light on a part of the country that i have no familiarity with and i think Correct. It, and i do think it does a good job of that i guess speaking from not having experience um yeah but for me the best part of the show is like <sighs> i don't want to say the violence cuz that sounds fucking weird of me but like that's the part of the show that I like where it's like, the, like he's desperately trying to hold on to like his land and this, that, and the other thing. The show kind of like got away from that. I feel like a little bit and, yeah. and, and trying to serve like all these other characters, right? Like you got Jamie being fucking insufferable. Don't care about him anymore. Like I th- I think what's her name is insufferable too. Like she's Beth. just Beth. And like the only character as I really like is fucking, uh, What's his name? Beth's husband. Casey. Casey and Beth's oh. husband. Um, uh, oh, yeah. yeah uh, can't think of his name. Uh, you want to fight somebody, you fight me. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Roy? Yeah. Not Roy. No. I can't think of it. No. You know what I'm talking I'm going to take some heat for this one. Rip. Rip. Yeah. Thought of it at the same time. <sighs> Rip and Casey are the two redeemable characters in this. Yes. Besides, obviously, some of the yeah. the native characters are well are very fascinating. Yeah, and then, and then now it's like there's the politics of it. It's like I just kind of don't care anymore. I don't know. And I think I I really like it's not Taylor Sheridan. I don't think. I mean, I excuse me. I still really enjoy Mayor of Kingstown. I thought last season was very good. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see where that goes. I still haven't watched uh, the other two shows that came out recently. Spec but, Ops, yeah, Lioness or whatever. Yeah, I have those on my list. So. I'll try to get to them soon. But yeah, so I don't know. The the Yellowstone verse uh, continues to expand regardless. We Mm -hmm. still have half of a season left. They we may finish the Dutton story in this half season just so they can he can wipe his hands out and be like, sorry guys. Yeah, maybe. We fucked the pooch on the end of this one. We're not gonna do seven seasons or five seasons anymore. We're just gonna do three and four seasons shit because that's apparently when actors are done. That's the way it should be, though. I mean, yeah. Um, so, yeah, speaking of Paramount, that's a big one for them. Um, it was reported earlier that Byron Allen, um, media mogul, he made a $14.3 billion offer 
to buy all the outstanding shares of Paramount Global. No, that was coming from Bloomberg, I think. Uh, Skydance is also in negotiations. Apparently, they're in preliminary due diligence stage of negotiations, so they're really looking into this. Um, I think it's it was reported that Byron may not be able to. He made an offer for, I think, BET because he wanted BET, um, and that's not as expensive as buying Paramount out. Um, but it looks like Sherry Redstone, who is the heir and daughter of S Summer Redstone, who built Paramount, she's ready to get hit, rid of her shares. And so it looks like Skydance may be mm -hmm. in the running for this one. And, you know, Skydance is run by the Ellison guys. Uh, his dad started Oracle, I think. So we got a couple heirs talking about selling one share to another. Um, but, yeah, this would be the first time Paramount would be relinqu relinquishing family power and after like nine decades because Summer ran it forever and then his daughter his daughter got it, Sherry. So Interesting. Yeah, WB was also rumored uh, to be in the hunt for Paramount, but it's still for sale, like I said. Uh, but Skydance, they did uh, Top Gun Maverick and they did the Mission Impossible stuff. So Yeah. Um, Ellison, he was considered, he was actually considered David Ellison dumb money because his dad started Oracle and made a whole fuck ton of money. And now he, he got an heir to the company and then st he started buying into Hollywood and they were like, Oh, look at this guy, this idiot's going to fucking do some dumb shit. And he did great with Skydance. So, uh, we'll see if he buys it, what he can do with Paramount. Um, but that was an interesting one. I thought. Okay. Um, and then the last piece of news here. Which I thought was fascinating because some of the stuff he says is some of the stuff that you said. Some of the stuff that I said. We're about to talk about Jacob Elordi. Yeah, um, gave an interview where um, oh, I'm just going to read the quote here. I like to make what I would watch, right. and I get very restless watching those movies. Mm -hmm. He said when asked about the possibility of doing superhero movies, basically not interested. This was actually a follow-up question to um, him saying he turned down a rating part for Superman. His response to that was, no, thank you. That's too much. That's too dark for me. Yeah, I remember when this kind of came out. Yeah, and then, you know, he talked about, like, the kissing booth. He was like, those movies are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They're not universal. They're an escape. Like, yeah. he said, I didn't want to make those movies. I only made them because I needed a job and I needed to work. But I thought it was pretty funny, like, him saying, yeah, I was offered a part to read Superman. I said, no, thank you. That's too much. That's too dark for me. And I get restless watching the superhero movies. I only make movies I like to watch. And so he does movies like Saltburn. Nice. Which so is uh, <laughs> what we're here to talk about. So that's all the news I have. All right. Well, thank you for the news. Yeah. As always. Uh, interesting that he... Uh, would like to watch a movie like this. At least that makes one of us. Because uh, I wish I never saw this movie and I never want to watch it again. Um, but not Ugh. for the reason that other people are talking about. Now, <laughs> um, the three scenes, really. There's three, like, uh, three specific scenes that is what got this movie all the talking. Yeah. And this, so, it. so this has been like, this is, so we're talking about fucking Saltburn. It's like all over the internet if you, go on social media, particularly TikTok. Um, if people are like making people like they're put it, posting people's reactions to it, namely like making like boomer dads watch these scenes and like showing yeah. their reaction. Um, and I think that's just really the crux of the issue with this movie is that it's mm -hmm. very much made for the TikTok generation. Um, Jacob Elordi is like a fucking Gen Z, like sex icon. And uh, I don't know. It's just, this movie just felt like content with a capital C, like the thing that I've taught. Like it doesn't, it didn't feel like a fleshed out movie. It was just like a, a well, thing. Well, that's what like it was weird when yeah, I when know. I when I was watching this movie and and I explained to you this earlier. Like it gave me uh, talented Mr. Ripley vibes. Like if somebody sat down and like was high and they watched Talented Mr. Ripley and they're like, we could do that movie. We could make it creepier. This and is weirder. This is like a Walmart talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah. And talented <laughs> Mr. Ripley, to be clear, to be clear, I don't even really like that movie. It's boring. I yeah, think it's, Mr. Ripley. It's, it's an okay movie. 
But it's rated uh, better than this, but yeah, and they're both in the sevens. <laughs> it's just <laughs> hilarious. So, uh, Saltburn is the follow up for Emerald Fennel, uh, to her Oscar winning mm-hmm. debut, which was Promising Young Woman. She won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay for that film. I haven't watched it, so I don't really know if it's good or not. not. Um, This movie stars Barry Keegan as Oliver. Uh, He's a new student at Oxford University who finds that uh, academic achievement sort of falls far behind, like, wealth um, when it comes to popularity and success. And um, his sort of public fortunes change in a sense when he befriends Felix, who's played by Jacob Lordy, a wealthy and desired classmate who shows interest in Oliver's more common background. Um, Felix, in, after having like a semester of friendship, Felix invites Oliver to spend the summer at his family estate called Saltburn, where Oliver has to navigate mm-hmm. uh, even more p- complicated politics of Felix's like family, uh, including his mother, played by Rosamund Pike, his father, played by Richard E. Grant, his sister, played by Allison Ov- Oliver, and his American cousin, who is a little bit weird, played by, uh, and that's, that's Farley, played by Archie Medicu. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Um, and he's kind of like the, I don't know, the villain of the movie, like, sort of, uh, whatever. He's a, yeah, he's a he's antagonist like, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's basically the plot of the movie. And like, that's really it. That's like all that exists in this movie. There's like no character development. None of the characters are very well written. The dialogue isn't that great. Uh, Really, the only strength of this movie, in my opinion, is the acting. I think the cast was great, doing a great job with what they were given, particularly um, Barry Keegan. Barry Keegan, I think, is phenomenal. In fact, I recently saw a clip. I've been getting these like TikTok tiktoks from a particular channel which is like it shows like a powerful scene from an actor and then like has like the script below the video so you can kind of see the difference between the scene and the script and one of the videos was him in um uh um banshees of indishir in in that last scene of his in the film where he like yeah talks to her about like you know whoa do you think you would ever like want to date a guy like me and she's like oh no and then he goes off and kills himself or whatever. He is such a fucking good actor. He's like so fucking talented. Everybody in this movie is very good. At least I thought. But he God, apparently took a lot of liberties at the end and shocked some of the crew with uh, the graveyard scene. <laughs> yeah, apparently all this stuff was like, you know, improv. So like, is you know, <laughs> he's a good actor, but like, <laughs> dude, rein it in a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember if it was him. I don't remember if it was him or Jacob Lordy. I saw a headline for one of them a couple of weeks ago where they were saying, like, this is it. I'm kind of done with doing... I think it was Jacob. He was like, I'm kind of done with doing, like, the young boy becoming a young man movies. Like, I'm ready to move on to the I'm a man type Mm -hmm. movies. Yeah. So. Well, I don't know what to make of this. I I just really vehemently did not enjoy it. Um because a there's better movies like it right telling this story spoilers bad shit starts to happen like weird shit starts to happen like you could it, it's so predictable like right from the get go that you could tell like yeah. Barry Keegan's character Oliver he's like a bit of a- yeah there's i mean there's fetishes and there's stalking and there's rich pretentious behavior and that's basically what you're watching for how long was this fucking movie? Yeah, two hours, but I don't even think that's the case. Like, you're watching, like, caric- mm. caricatures of what the, uh, what's her name, uh, thinks rich I people agree with are. You, though, it was, like, it was very predictable. It's not how rich people beat. Like, this is not, like, I don't know. It's just weird. It, it was just a weird movie. It just felt cartoonish, a lot of the stuff that was going on. And it reminded me a lot of fucking, uh, Infinity Pool that we all vehemently hated. It just felt mm-hmm. like just pretentious bullshit that I fucking hate. And and you know it's pretentious because if you read the reviews, it has a 7.1 on IMDb for God knows why. But this, r- critics love this fucking movie. If you read the critic reviews, they're all like fucking breaking it down with like fancy words and fucking, oh, this is, this is, uh, what was one I called? Uh, um cinema something like fuck off like this is not a good movie like i don't give a fuck what critics say this is why critics are fucking stupid 
okay? They like shit like this, but then they'll fucking dunk on a fucking comic book movie that has, like, all the objective elements of what makes a good movie. Like, strong character development, strong, like, this had none of that. Well, that's so, why I think, like, there's, it's funny about, like, some of the Oscar type movies or even the, yeah, the movies like this where it's a director's like, oh, I'm just going to show everybody everything about this thing. And <laughs> it's all like, pretentious. You didn't, you didn't, yeah, you wait. Um, okay. And the reason I say this movie was made for the TikTok generation is because, like, there's nothing to this movie. There is no meat to it at all. It's like, here are people that say stuff to each other. And then here's a twist that happens that's not really that big of a twist. It's for the, it's for the like, uh, fucking the 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 people who are like media illiterate. Like these are this movie's for people who have never watched other movies. Like this is supposed to be deep. That this guy was like spoilers. He was like manipulating the family and like manipulating his way into power. Manipulating yeah. his way into the family dynamic to then kill everybody and take over the family fortune. Like. For no reason. They don't even explain why he's doing any of the things he's doing. You don't get an explanation to anything. You don't yeah. even fuck it. You don't get to find out why, like... It's a it's a warning movie for rich uh, people. Be careful who you invite yeah. to your home. <laughs> and the movie just, like, says stuff of, like... You know, his sister says to Oliver at one point, like, oh, you're just another one of his toys. You'll be gone once the summer comes. I would have loved to learn about, like, what happened with his, the last best friend that happened. They they mention it briefly that, like, he tried to fuck mm -hmm. the sister and that they broke up the friendship. But you don't learn anything about any of these characters except for these, like, very surface level things. Like, parents are eccentric rich people. Uh, family friend is, like, weird and depressed. Uh, stepbrother is a minority whose dad is still, like, financing them, maybe. Uh, it was just all such, like, bad, badly written characters. Um, but here's a funny... Entertainment Weekly g gives this a hundred on Metas Metacritic. The film is not for the faint of heart, but it is viscerally compelling and unafraid to luxuriate in its own elegant weirdness. It's endless visual and literal... literal uh, Sorry, its endless visual and literary layers will bring its ardent admirers back to it again and again because it is a triumph of the cinema of excess in all its orgiastic, unapologetic glory. Like, you are not a real person, Maureen Lee Lanker. Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> are you kidding me with that review? What does that even mean? Is there a human being on Earth that could actually, like, understand what that means? I don't know. I I don't know. Like I, Archie Medequi, Medequi or however you say his name. Like I like him. He's he's a good actor. Um, I know you haven't seen uh, uh, the Gran Turismo movie, but he was in that. He was really good in that. He's in C, uh, Apple TV show. You haven't seen also. That's really good. He was also in Midsummer. Like he's he's a good actor. That's been in some good stuff. No, I think all the and actors this, were great. Yeah, uh, I mean, they were just written poorly. And what they were told to act, I guess. Yeah, they did it. Yeah, he, he did a great in, job of being insufferable. like uh, <laughs> insufferable, stand around, and yeah. I don't want to lose my position. And right. somebody's not going to weasel me out. Like mm -hmm. he did a great job at that, but it's like I just didn't like him as a character. No, I didn't either. I thought he did. I didn't and, like. And you're not supposed to like any of these guys. I, I guess. didn't this like is, any of them as a character. Like really, the only one that I think like maybe I kind of liked a little bit and wish I got to learn more about was fucking uh Archie or whatever the fuck his name is. No, that's the kid. That's the real name. Yeah. Um what's the fucking uh, I can't remember. Honestly, I totally today I woke up and I realized we were recording because we were supposed to record last night. I like forgot I watched this movie yesterday. I I'm I'm I shit you not. <laughs> I immediately forgot it existed. Um the fuck is this guy's name? I, I, hang on, let me go back into my fucking notes here because now I'm fucking up our whole shit. Well, we've got <laughs> Oliver and Felix. Felix, Who Felix. Two? Okay. Felix is like the only character that I feel like was like that I somewhat had like an interest in because he's framed by the movie as like this this rich fucking asshole kid who's just Mr. Popular for no reason and doesn't deserve. He was like a nice guy. I thought. Well, he had tendencies to be nice, but he also showed tendencies of being pompous and that 
uh, careful because you could be gone, you know. Yeah, because like, that's the world he comes from. But I think deep down he's a nice guy. Like he saw Bar he saw Oliver like that scene in the bar where Oliver didn't have like money or whatever, didn't have money, and he walked up and was like, you know, he's like, Hey, you dropped this. Oh, yeah, to not, yeah. To not he, embarrass he made some him. nice gestures, but he also made some some asshole gestures. Like totally. He kind of fell down that line of, okay, there are some times where you kind of want to like him or you want to find more out more about him, but then another scene comes up and you're like uh, this guy's just a rich fuck. Fuck this guy. So I like, never they really blended so that well, found that, but to be honest, eh. I never got that from him ever. I I always just saw him as be that was the other kid. Um, no, because in my mind, I mean he farly. was jealous. He he was jealous of his sister because he wanted the attention of those guys. And uh, I mean, I guess that's not rich pretentiousness. That's just jealousy. But I don't know. I just never found. I, and again, I think this is just like a. a I didn't like him at times. Is all I'm saying. There were times no, no. where um, I understand what you're saying. His good deeds. You're like, yeah, this is interesting. What's going on with this guy? But. I'm I not saying so. he was likable. I'm just saying that the film presents him as this rich, arrogant asshole, but the, the, but it never really like solidifies it because they only show him being nice to Oliver. You know what right. I mean? Um, yes, he is like he definitely is part of that like uh, lifestyle of excess, right? Um, you know, he's fucking in his bathtub in front of like the giant window, but that's like how he was brought. It, that's not him as a person. I don't feel like I think as a person, like on a human level, he was just always being nice, at least in my mind. So again, I just think that's a weakness of the movie. Like it didn't even do what it was trying to do of like, oh, look at all these rich assholes and this kid getting vengeance upon them. And it's like, so let's talk about that, too. Like, that's the whole point of the movie. Oliver was like just trying to like weasel in his to get the family fortune. But like, why we never learned why like he just like literally looks out a window one day and is like, that kid's popular. I'm going to fuck with his whole life. Like it doesn't make any sense. He's not no, established as a character. He's not established as a psychopath or sociopath or anything. He's just, he just does stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I mean, if you wanted to be like a film critic, you could maybe argue that this is a bright kid that doesn't come from money and he stumbled upon this thing. He didn't even will his, maybe he willed his way into it. Maybe he didn't, but I don't know. Saw the guy and then got invited to a place and realized, <laughs> Hey, this is nice. Yeah. I can, uh, I, I can do some stuff here well, because no. these people are fucking idiots. No, no, no. He and planned... I can manipulate them into getting what I want. No, he planned it from the second he got to school because they show in the end, like he is the one that fucking stuck the thing in his tire so that he could facilitate. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Giving he did. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it was all yeah. planned out from him getting that. to college. So the only thing that you could logically think is like, oh, like you said, he had to work to get into this college because they mentioned that he like is on a scholarship or whatever. And they're, they're all the rich people are like, <laughs> look at this scholarship boy. <laughs> like, so that's like the only explanation as to why he feels this way about the rich people is that they didn't have to work for their position here or whatever. But I think the other thing is this movie was sold at least on social media as it's like, Oh, it's uncomfortable to watch and it goes places. Other films would cut away from to spare the audience. The scenes that are supposed to be shocking are really not that shocking. No, I mean the, the bathtub scene I saw coming from a mile away. Like yeah. as soon as he I was got waiting the bathtub, for it, I was like, I, yeah, I was like, yeah, okay. We know what's coming here. <laughs> and 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 this there's two things. This movie's being sold billed as like some sort of like gay fucking like queer fucking thing, which it isn't really. I mean, I don't think. And also like it's shocking. Okay, let's talk about the two shocking, three shocking scenes that happen. One, this fucking dude Felix jerks off in the bathtub. And then Felix goes in and like uh, Oliver goes in and like slurps up the fucking bath water. Drinks the dirty bathtub water. And like licks around the fucking this, this, yeah. the drain. It's gross. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's gross. But is it shocking? No. And it was very predictable, as you said. I mean, it's it's supposed to be shocking because like if he's just there to manipulate them, what is he doing doing? That's what I'm trying to say. It's not shocking. It's just gross for no reason. Yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah. It's the same scene from Infinity Pool where she walks up behind him taking a leak, jerks him off, and, oh, you, yeah. Yeah. and you see mm -hmm. the fucking jizz hit the floor for no right. reason. It does yeah. nothing to the story. It does nothing <laughs> for the strength of the characters at all. This is the same thing. Yeah. It does nothing, mm -hmm. but it's just there to... 
look at what I put on screen. It's like, who fucking, that doesn't do anything. And again, I'm speaking as somebody who's watched some, and as you have, some like grotesque, gory fucking horror movies in the past. Yeah. This shit don't shock me. This is like nothing. This is baby games. So yeah. if, you, if you're not going to fucking do anything to establish like these characters or, or like strengthen the characters or the story, then you're doing nothing. You're just doing no, it I, yeah, I for, for, for this, this shock value. It's shock value. Yep. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is like he fucking it's fing- a new jump scare. It's just what can we do that's yeah. gross. That- the second shocking scene is this like really weird scene between Oliver. Yeah, the, the graveyard at night. Is that where they were at? No, they were just like outside. Oliver and yeah. the sister. Um, yeah. And he's like trying to hook up with her and she's like oh it's not the best time of the month and he's like I don't care I'm a vampire and proceeds to like finger her Mm -hmm. and like go down on her and there's like blood all over him and he's like rubbing it all over her and it's like again another scene it's gross Mm -hmm. but it doesn't do anything for either character or the story literally does nothing Um, other than Farley to be like hey I saw them like doing stuff and it's like (laughs) okay (laughs) And then the final scene that's shocking, I guess, is Oliver, like... The grave. Fucking the grave, grave dirt. <laughs> Spoilers. Felix dies. We mentioned that, because fucking whatever. Oliver kills him. And then he's, like, weeping over his grave and then pulls his dick out and starts, like, fucking the dirt yeah. of the freshly dug grave. With the mud. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's raining and shit. Yeah. Again, makes no fucking sense. Doesn't do anything for the character. Uh, maybe no. you could argue, like, oh, it just shows him as being, like, a crazy person. It's like... Okay, uh, and then the, at the end, then the movie ends with him just like dancing naked around the he house. He really loved him, but it was just too much because he needed the empire for himself, so he had to get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, it but made, he's love stricken by it. It just made so no, he had to fuck his grave. Yeah, it made no fucking sense, dude. This movie made no sense. It was just this is a bad movie. Oh, yeah. this is a bad movie. It's pretentious. It's made for fucking TikTok like uh, reactions. The plot is thin. Uh, flimsy character development and I feel like in better days of, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but like we're in a fucking bad time for fucking media. I'm just going to say it like, you know, we talked about fucking the holdovers a couple of episodes ago, man, that is what a good movie is. That's what good movies used to be. Those are few and far between that's why i gave that movie a 10 i think is what i said it was i would rate it a 10 it was perfect like had compelling characters like a good story oh, we've watched some good ones the last no, 80 episodes or so for sure we have but when this is the stuff that is getting like this uh, critical yeah. acclaim it's scary because this is clearly mm-hmm. made as i said it's content it's it's like it's made for the content generation. This isn't a fucking movie. This would be laughed out of any studio in better days. Okay. Yeah. Um, I agree. It's just, it, it's, it's actually insulting. Well, and this is also like, and I mean, this goes back to like, we were talking about uh, Sebastian Vivid Check or whatever I said his name was a guy that yeah. he won some award for his first movie at uh, Fest. And they're like, okay, let's give you something to do. And mm-hmm. that's basically what happened with her. She made she made a film and it got great reviews at a festival and so somebody handed her something and said, "Here's the keys. So shock us again." And so this is what we get. Yeah, I don't know, Handing man. the keys to the newcomers. I don't know. We're in a we're in a we're in for a rude awakening, man, cuz it's like I, again, I, I mean, I don't I, like you say we don't listen to the no, 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 for the sure. Critics, but, anyways, A twenty four is going to continue to put out bangers. Did you see actually? Sorry to drill. Did you watch the trailer for the latest A twenty four movie with the, it's like a parrot? No. Did you watch the trailer okay. for Long Legs? We hadn't talked about that. Oh no, we have not. No, but did you watch yeah, it? Anywho. The trailer, Long Legs. Yeah. No, no, I have not. Yet. Ooh, no. let's talk about that in a, in a bit, but. Um, okay. just to wrap up with this movie, I just, I don't know. I, I, I didn't find it. I, I, I'm shocked yeah, that it has a 7.1 on IMDb. Like really yeah, I, going back to it. Yeah. I'm not worried about what the critics are praise and don't praise. No, I don't care. Because about that. when, when, when a movie comes out and it gets like 
24 percent on tomato meter and the critic or the the audience loves it like 98 percent i'm like well obviously this is a good movie and the critics are fucking idiots and when it's flopped you got it you there's there's sometimes you could tell on some of these rating websites like if all the critics love it and the audience hates it it's a fucking terrible boring ass movie or you need to be mm-hmm. um you you need a degree in theater to really understand <laughs> the nuance of yeah. the story that they're trying to tell. But this has like good good like it has pretty decent like uh, user like um, you know audience reviews too. Yeah, yeah. yeah but that's also because the generation that watches it like there's that's be what a I'm lot saying. This movie was love. made for content. It's just not yeah. a it's not a pure movie. Um, is no. the best way and and I I sound pretentious saying that, but it's just not. It's not like it made the holdovers like stand out even more to me. Yeah. Because that, uh, that type of movie is missing from today's cinema. Yeah. Like, no, I get what you're like. This, this film was d- designed with the thought that it's going to be sliced up and chopped up and shared on social media yeah, everywhere. A hundred percent. Because you can take a 10 like, second oh, did you see Barry out Keegan's of dick? context. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of tick. The audience score has 79%. My, I dropped my jaw quite a few times in very awkward parts of the movie, but still, cinematography was 10 out of 10, and the suspense had me on the edge of my seat. What suspense? I knew literally everything that was going to happen in this movie. Do you not watch <laughs> yeah, movies? Was, no. Movies it that keep me thinking about them afterwards are good movies to me. This one had me sucked in from the start. And as I kept anxiously awaiting another bit of something edgy, absurd, steamy, or just shocking. Uh, what? I don't know, man. I don't know. How old are these people reviewing this? They gotta be young. <clears throat> I don't know. I, got, I, I don't know. Yeah, my most entertaining, the, the most entertaining for me uh, watching this movie was watching it with my lady uh, because uh, I knew these scenes, like the three scenes, like I could tell they were coming. And so I wasn't actually watching the scenes. I was watching her expressions. So, so I was watching her react to it because like, I was like, bet I'm standing by the fireplace and she's watching and like dropping her jaw, covering her mouth, like, oh my God. But uh, yeah, I don't, that was, that was the most entertaining part for me watching this movie was watching her reactions to some of those scenes. Otherwise, the movie was just meh. I, it was less than meh for me, honestly. I give this a one out of ten. I don't know what Ooh. what you want to rate it, but I, I I mean, and that's like being generous. That is purely because I thought the acting was great with what they were given. Yeah, I can't. I don't like. I won't give a movie a ten. I don't know if I'll give one a <laughs> one. I might, but this is not. I give it a a three for the acting because I think. Uh, Archie and Barry did yeah. some good job. Like, I'm not familiar with uh, Jacob Elordi or whatever because I don't watch no. the Gen Z shit. But, and you know, people are saying this is like fantastic cinematography. Like, the cinematographer was and Linus. Rosamund did a good job as a mom. Yeah. Yeah. The cinematographer of this was Linus Sangren, who he won the Academy Award for La La Land. And then he also shot um, Damien Chazelle, the same director of La La Land. Uh, he shot First Man and Babylon. Um, He's a good cinematographer. This movie looked fucking terrible to me. The lighting was so weird. Always. It made me feel like I had fucking glaucoma. So I don't really agree with that. It had good cinematography either. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. I'm not. Um, I mean, there were some good, there were some good shots in the film, but nothing really stood out to me. Like, oh yeah, that's a, that's an amazing shot. Uh, There were some that were like, oh, that's kind of pretty, but. Yeah, well, most I of mean, it, it was just weird indoor. Or we're in a mansion. Like, there's not a whole lot to light. Or when when people talk about cinematography, they're talking about fucking, uh, you know, uh, aspect ratio and fucking types of lenses yeah. that they're using. I don't give a fuck about that. I, I care about how it looks. I'm not a filmmaker. I don't operate a fucking camera. I don't care. I just well, I judge it a lot by the night scenes, and then you could see pretty well when the dark scenes when they well, were there was outside, just so. but but yeah, but some of the lighting in this movie was like it just like I don't know it. it it was fucking whatever. No, no, I get that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Didn't like this movie. It's fucking. It was made not for me. It was made for the people. Wonder what Marvin's gonna rate. It. <laughs> it was made for people that I fucking hate. And I, just to wrap this yeah. conversation up, I have to read another. 
<laughs> pr like high praise Metacritic review from Gregory Elwood. This is swinging for the fences with the bases loaded type of movie. An irreverent monster of a film that leaves you buzzing. We're talking cinema, baby. Like, uh, I don't want to wish ill on people, but this person should not be writing for a living. Like, you, you should be fired immediately if you have that <laughs> opinion. Sorry. <sighs> Saltburn. 7.1, eh? Okay. Yeah, no, we, uh, this actually, this might be our lowest rated film, depending on what Marvin. No, we gave, I think it. we all gave, I think, I think it's gotta be, uh, Infinity Pool. We all gave that like a nothing score. But keep in oh, mind, Marvin we? and I, when we reviewed Scream, you weren't here for that, but we didn't even rate it. We were like, nah, this isn't even rateable. It's so bad. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. This was just like, this sucked. It sucked. It was, it just was not good. And and the and, and you know the thing that sucks even more is like I have heard that promising young woman is like great movie. Clearly, she won an Academy Award for it. Right. I don't I don't even give a fuck to watch it now. I wouldn't watch anything else that this woman <laughs> does for the rest of my life. I don't care. That's that's a problem with uh, your soft your sophomore film. If if you like swing for the fences, as that one one reviewer said, and you quote unquote strike out with most of your audience, they're not even gonna go back and watch that. I mean maybe they will just to go see like is the other one as shocking as this one? Like you'll get some people who do that, but probably I think promising like, young woman is about like a like a chick um I think it's about like she is like getting vengeance on people who've like sexually assaulted her or something like that. I, I don't really yeah. know exactly what it's about. Yeah. A young woman traumatized by, by a traumatic a past. Yeah. And navigates balancing forgiveness and vengeance. So it's like John wick with a chick or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Minus the guns. I think she's getting vengeance using her sexuality. Probably if I had to guess, cause mm. you know, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I think that's, that's really, it's like, I, I just can't believe, like, what was shocking, man. Like, it was just gross scenes. I don't care to watch that, really. And I'm not like... I, do, I don't care to watch that shit at all. Like, and, I, don't, I don't need to see a dude drink dirty bath water. But here's the thing, though. I, I, need to, uh, I need to be clear, is that I'm not like... That doesn't develop the character for me. I'm not grossed out by it. I'm not shocked by it. I'm not disturbed by it. I'm not any of the things that the director clearly wanted to induce in people. I simply, it's it's just an objectively gross act, and and I don't yeah. think it strengthened the movie. If it strengthened the movie or the characters, fine, show it to me. But it didn't. So what is the purpose of it other than to shock? And it didn't even do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. I, if I, I mean, show there my... are scenes where sometimes that works, though, like objectively gross things. Like um, I'm I'm thinking of End of Days. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger is in his old apartment, and he's a fucking alcoholic. And he needs some breakfast, and so he's got this blender, and he's putting like yeah, yeah. like warm beer and like a moldy <laughs> slice of pizza and a couple of eggs, and like right. when I was in the theater watching this, he put the blender on. Somebody yelled in the theater, "Don't do it!" And then he takes a drink, and so you, everybody kind of laughed at the effect because that's the effect. Like it's like ooh, that's gross, but oh, that's also kind of funny. Where this is just like, why? Why would he do? Why? Why? Why did he do that? Don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. We'll never know. So they don't explore it. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, yeah. I guess uh, let Salt us burn. know. Let us know what you thought of Saltburn if you've watched it. Um, yeah. Add us on Twitter or uh, leave a comment below the video. I don't really know what else to say about it other than I fucking hated it. I wish I never watched it. I fucking hate <laughs> you for recommending we watch it. Um, yeah, yeah, not good. Yeah, not... we should have done Wonka instead. No, I mean, listen, it's fine that we did it, but I just, I don't know. I knew I wasn't going to like it, too. Like, I knew it, because the buzz that it was getting, I knew that it, what it was. Like, I knew what it was. I knew what it was going to be. So, um, well, I mean, I, I, I didn't, I had not seen a trailer or really heard much I didn't about either. it. Like, I heard it was getting buzz. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, my lady asked me, and she's like, you want to watch this? And then she kind of read the synopsis for me. And I was like, yeah. Eh. And I saw Barry Keegan. I was like, okay, well, let's, I mean, I'll give it a go. This feels like it's going to be a weird one, but it's Barry. Well, and the kid's good. So yeah, I we'll think, see. I think the new metric for things for me is like, if it is being talked about on TikTok, I'm going to not like it or it's not going to be great. <laughs> Uh, just, that's just how it is because I'll tell you what, nobody's talking about holdovers on TikTok. No, unless, unless it's like an actual, like film centric channel on TikTok, like an account that makes, does movie reviews and stuff. You don't see the holdovers on there. You, you see Brightburn, I mean, Brightburn, you see Saltburn all over fucking TikTok of like, Haha, I made my dad watch that scene. And it's like. Yeah, of course, if I make my 65-year-old father watch this dude suck up jizz water, <laughs> he's going to have a funny reaction to it. But it doesn't yeah, mean, like, uh, that's, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's just a cheap, cheap thrill. It's like a roller coaster. It's just this, yeah. and, at, and at the end of the day, there's just no substance to it. No, it's not rewatchable. It's not enjoyable the first time through. Nah. Um, it's, Long it's, as fuck. Well, like you said, it's fun. Like if you're gonna watch it with somebody, it's fun to see their reaction. That's like, like yeah. I said, that's the enjoyment I got out of it. So, yeah. And again, it just made it. It made it really made holdovers stand out for me even more than it did. It made me. I could easily now say that holdovers best movie of 2022, easy, uh, 2023 rather easily, because it's just like <laughs> it's almost the same movie, really. Actually, if you think about it, minus like the murder and stuff. It's about like a kid dealing with like these rich fucking pompous, you know what I mean? Like it's the same. Yeah, it's same mm, sort of yeah. spirit a little bit, but this is like you're watching real people deal with like real complicated human emotion and actually grow as characters. Whereas this movie is just like, there's just none of that. I've seen, I saw a TikTok video of this like, like deep dive into the demeaning of fucking Saltburn. <clears throat> And this chick is comparing it to like, oh yeah, this is about the the garden of good and evil, the painting where it's like the breakdown of fucking of of the rich and like the uh, the decadent. It's like, dude, shut up, just shut the fuck up. This movie was nothing of that sort. It was just word vomit. Blah, 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 blah. Like, here's fucking yeah. some guy doing shit. I'm gonna continue to hate on movies <laughs> that are boring nonsense that are only. To show shock value or rich, pretentious people in an un, you know, flattering light because uh, you, to the non-rich, they're already in an unflattering light. Like, everybody wants to be rich, sure, but we all know what fucking rich, pretentious fucks do. I don't need to sit down and watch it for two hours. They don't, don't do this. Fuck. I mean... This was yeah, cartoonish. Well, that family sits around and kind of does, like, the... The daughter sitting around being rebellious and smoking. For sure. Like, like, but that's such cleanliness just, and, you know, struggling with the eating disorders like that. You know, it's you, such a surface level that. thing. It's like, who fuck, yeah, who fucking cares? Right. Everybody deals with that. And like, what were they trying to do with the butler? Like, he was like creepy or something. Like, what was that? Like, there was just nothing to uh, anything. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Anyhow, hated it. Yeah. I hope, I hope everybody forgets it ever existed. Don't recommend it. No, do not recommend this at all. Uh, unfortunate but yeah let yeah. us know what you think in the comments that's going to do it for us folks uh, there's our thoughts on Saltburn uh, again reach out to us on Twitter or leave a comment letting us know give a like on the video it's very helpful and if you liked what you've listened to and you have not done so yet consider subscribing uh, we are slowly marching towards that thousand subscriber uh, goal of ours uh, would be very cool of you to help us out. Um, you can check out all of our links at our website, harshlanguage.tv, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for listening and or watching. Hasta. <laughs>